All right, the quadratic formula and the discriminant. So the good old quadratic formula, let's look at um, today's objectives is quadratic formula and also being able to tell how many solutions a quadratic equation has by the discriminant and what types of solutions it will have. So the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that's the quadratic formula. Then the special part inside the square root, right underneath the square root, that is given a special name. It's called the discriminant. Given a special name because the discriminant tells us a few things about a quadratic equation. So we're looking at quadratic equations that are ax squared plus bx plus c. And we're solving those when they're equal to zero. Now, if the discriminant, so if we took the b squared minus the 4 times a times c, and we got a positive number, so under the square root, it's a positive number, that tells us we would have two real solutions. If we take the b squared and t minus 4 times a times c, and it equals 0, so we get a square root of a 0 in that quadratic formula, we only have one real solution. And the discriminant tells us, well, if the b squared minus 4ac is a negative number under the square root, then we will have two imaginary solutions. If the discriminant is positive, those two real solutions will give us two real x-intercepts, two x-intercepts. If it is zero, we have one real solution. That means we only have one x-intercept. Just one time it crosses, and that would be called the vertex of the parabola. If under the square root the discriminant is negative, that's two imaginary solutions. That means our parabola never crosses the x-axis. It has no x-intercepts. So the discriminant tells us a lot of important information. And that's the part that goes under the square root in the quadratic formula. So we're going to do a couple examples and we're going to find the number of solutions by finding the discriminant and then we're going to solve using the quadratic formula. So first remember that the quadratic formula is again x equals negative b plus and minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I like to like, kind of sing it to the pop goes the weasel. It helps to remember it anyways. And then here we can identify our a, b, and c. Note that before we can start solving, we do need this to be equal to zero. So the first thing we'll need to do is subtract one on both sides. And we will get x squared plus 3x minus 1 equals zero. So now our a, our leading coefficient equals 1, our b is in front of the x, that equals 3, and our c equals negative 1 because we're looking at parabolas that have the formula ax squared plus bx plus c. They're in standard form. So first if I define if I find the discriminant, that is just the um, part under the square root, the b squared minus 4ac. That's going to tell me how many solutions and what kind of solutions that we have. So I'm going to find that first. So I'm just going to do b squared, so 3 squared. Minus 4, and it's AC, that means times A times C. So 3 squared is 9, and then I think of this as a negative 4 here. So negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive. So that gives me 9 plus 4. So two negatives here are going to make that a plus. 9 plus So that means that I will have two, if it's a positive number, I will have two real solutions. That means it will cross the x-axis two times. This problem opens up somewhere the leading coefficient that was positive here. So it opens up, I'm going to have two x-intercepts, two real solutions. What are those x-intercepts? Well, we can finish using the quadratic formula and finish solving to find so I know that the part under the square root here 
A equals 13, so I can substitute that in for that um, discriminant there. I'm going to have x equals negative b, negative 3, plus or minus the square root, b squared minus 4ac was 13, all over 2 times a, which is 1. Then to reduce that a little bit, well, it's going to be negative 3, plus or minus the square root of 13, and 2 times 1 is 2. Now, 13 is on the inside of the quad, uh, on the inside of the square root, so I can't simplify it with anything on the outside. Also, 13 is prime, so I can't reduce it any further. So this ends up being my final answer. Now, the square root of 13 is really close to, well, it's in between the square root of 9 and the square root of um, 16. So the square root of 13 is approximately... Uh, 3.6, I'd say. 3.6 is close. So if you want to get an idea of what these actual x-intercepts are, you could use an approximation. So you know, negative 3 plus 3.6 equals 0.6 divided by 2 will be 0 0.3. So 0 0.3 is approximately our first x-intercept, 0.3. If we go the other way and we do negative 3 minus 3.6, that's negative 6.6 .6 divided by 2. That's going to be negative 3.3. Well, that's my other x-intercept is at approximately negative 3.3. So those are just approximate approximations to those x-intercepts. And to write them as x-intercepts and um, not as approximations, you're going to leave it as negative 3 plus the square root of 13, 2, and negative 3 minus the square root of 13, 2, and 0. So this is as an ordered pair as an x-intercept. That's just like if I said, what is this point right here? Well, that's the x-intercept, the point five zero. So if I wanted them as x-intercept, that's a way to write them as an x-intercept. You could have left it as this. That's what x equals. Just trying to tie it all back together. Let's do another one. Again, we want it to be equal to 0. So the first thing we're going to have to do is move the positive 2x to the left by subtracting 2x. And we're going to have to move the negative 5 to the left by adding 5. So I'm going to get x squared minus 2x plus 5 equals 0. There was no like terms over here, it's just an x squared, so those things, the other terms are just added or subtracted towards the x squared. Then we have x equals negative b plus and minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I'm going to start by finding the discriminant, which is the b squared minus 4ac. So b this time a is equal to 1, b is negative 2, and c is 5. So a is the coefficient in front of the x squared, b is in front of the x, and c is the constant. So b squared would be negative 2 squared minus 4 times a times c. Remember, whenever you square something, you're going to always get a positive answer. So if you're putting this in your calculator, negative 2, or your calculator will give you the wrong answer. So negative 2 squared is positive 4. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. 4 times negative 20 is negative 16. This is my discriminant. This is the part that is under the square root. Since that is a negative number under the square root, that tells me I'm going to have two imaginary solutions. Because when you take a square root of a negative number, you get an imaginary answer. So our solutions are going to be imaginary. What that means for our graph of our problem is that it's not going to cross the x-axis. This one opens up as well, and it will stay above the x-axis. It will never cross here. That's what the imaginary roots imply. To continue solving, to find the solution, that x equals, we got negative b. Well, b is already negative, so be careful. So 
negative negative 2 plus and minus the square root. b squared minus 4ac was the negative 16 that we just found times 2, or divided by all over 2a, which is 2 times 1. Oops, I was trying to move the solution line down here. So let's reduce this a little bit. Like I said, negative negative 2, that's going to be a positive 2. Plus or minus the square root of negative 16 is the imaginary 4, 4i. 2 times 1 is 2. Notice that all of these numbers now are divisible by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. I'm sorry, a mistake there. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 2. Since these can all be divided by 2, I can reduce that to 1 plus or minus. 2i, uh, I meant to say 1, over 1. So your final answer is 1 plus and minus 2i. And we can leave that as a complex number. It's 1 plus 2i and it's 1 minus 2i, or you can leave it like I had originally written it. So those are complex solutions to that quadratic equation. Okay, find the number of solutions again using the discriminant and then solve using the quadratic formula. So first, remember the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This time our a is a negative x squared, so our a is actually negative 1, which means our parabola opens down. b is 2 and c is negative 1. So just finding the discriminant again would be just finding the b squared minus 4ac. So we got b squared would be 2 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times negative 1. We got 4 times a times c. So 2 squared is 4. Now you have a negative times a negative times a negative. So you're going to be subtracting. There's three negatives here. So 4 times 1 times 1 is 4. So it's going to be 4 minus 4, which is 0. Since our discriminant equals 0, you're going to have square root of 0 up in the radical. Remember what I highlighted up here? That means that you're only going to have one solution, and it's going to be a real solution. You're going to have one real solution. In terms of our parabola, that means it's only going to cross the x-axis one time. And this one opened down, so that means it might look something like this. I don't know exactly what it'll look like. That's just a sketch. But that one real solution will be the vertex of that parabola then. So we can finish solving. That x equals negative b, negative 2, plus or minus the square root, the discriminant, b squared minus 4 c is equal to 0, all over 2 times a, which is negative 1. Well, the square root of 0 is just 0, so negative 2 plus or minus 0 is still negative 2. And 2 times negative 2 is negative, or 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And negative 2 divided by negative 2 is positive 1. So this is actually the point 1, 0. My x equals 1. I have one answer. As an ordered pair, it's the x, 1, 0. So only one real solution for that one. That basically covered all of the cases. I think I have one more example if you want to stick around and uh, see this example. The reason I threw this in was, first of all, in order to solve this equation, it must, instead of being equal to y, it must be equal to 0. 0 is solving. When does x, along the x-axis, when does x equal 0? So the equation must be equal to 0. The other reason I threw one of the terms here, usually we have ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're actually missing the bx term. So b is going to be, it will be 1. b is going to be 0, there is no x term, and c is 3. So if you have the quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus and minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Finding the discriminant, b squared is going to be 0 squared minus 4 
put 10 things times c. It's going to be 0. There's only one negative here, so we're going to be subtracting. 4 times 3 is 12. 0 minus 12 is negative 12. That discriminant tells me that I'm going to have two imaginary solutions. because I have a square root of a negative number. This parabola opens up again, so it means that it's not going to cross the x-axis. It's going to be up, up here somewhere. So let's find those imaginary solutions by using the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b, which is 0, plus or minus the square root. Negative 12 was the discriminant all over 2 times a, which is 1. Well, 0, negative 0, 0, it's still 0, plus and minus the square root of negative 12 is just plus or minus the square root of negative 12 over 2. Now let's reduce that a little bit. First of all, when we have a square root of a negative 12, that's going to be plus and minus i square roots of 12. Then we want to reduce the square root of 12 a little bit. So I'm going to have to switch colors so you can see it a little bit. We got the square root of 12 here. That can be broken down to 4 times 3, and 4 can be broken down to 2 times 2. So you have a perfect square pair inside this radical. The 2 comes on the outside, and the 3 is left inside. So square root of 12 is 2 square roots of 3. The square root of imaginary 12 then will be 2i square roots of 3. Really, that's the only difference is that you need to include the i. So that's going to be plus and minus 2i square roots of 12, all divided by 2. Then you can reduce, oops, I'm sorry, it wasn't supposed to be the square root of 12 there. It was supposed to be the square root of 3, all divided by 2. Then you can reduce this, since the 2 here and the 2 here are both outside of the radical, they can be reduced together like you have a single fraction. 2 divided by 2 is 1 over 1. So really we're just left with plus and minus i square roots of 3. So we still have two answers, x equals positive i square roots of 3 and negative i square roots of 3. Okay, that basically covers each situation, and then you saw what happens when your b is zero as well. This one would have been much easier to solve square root method instead of the quadratic formula. If we go back to the original x squared plus three, we could have just subtracted three from both sides. Negative three plus x squared plus three times three is negative three. So So notice you do still get the same answer. It's an imaginary, two imaginary answers. <clears throat> but it's good to practice with the quadratic formula too. All right, thanks for watching.